Shanghai is hands down an incredible, incredible city to live. However, it's definitely not a city for everyone. Not everyone will enjoy life in Shanghai simply because the city is freaking huge. It's a city of 25 million people. It can get very messy, intense even dangerous for some. I have lived and studied in Shanghai and in this video I will tell you the pros and cons of living in Shanghai and if you're interested to hear more about my experience check out my book. I wrote a book about my experience living in China. Uh, it's called I Lived in Shanghai and I will of course link it down below. Okay let's get into the video. Shanghai is a very safe city. I know that a lot of people have this misconception that China is not a particularly safe place but that is not necessarily true Shanghai is a very safe city in general the crime rate is much lower than in other Western cities of similar size I guess especially when you consider the size of Shanghai I mean it is a city of 25 million people the city is really relatively safe I say relatively because of course shit happen everywhere and it is a big city however in general walking home alone at night at like I don't know 11 p.m. as a woman is considered very normal and safe uh, you can totally take public transportation at night you can totally take taxi by yourself as a woman at night I've done that many times a lot of my friends do it my, I mean all my friends do it there is one thing about the city that is not particularly safe and can be quite dangerous but I'm gonna mention that a bit later in the video the size of Shanghai as I said, Shanghai is a city of 25 million people and I feel like this can be considered both as a pro but it can also be a con. The thing is that not everyone is meant to live in a city of that size. It, it can be a good thing because of course that means that you have a lot of people, a lot of opportunities, a lot of work, a lot of great cultural things happening. But this size can also really make your life difficult. If you live on like one end of Shanghai, getting to the other end can take hours. Even though the communication, I mean the public transportation, the roads are pretty good in Shanghai. So like getting around the city is not as hard as you would imagine getting around a city of 25 million people. But still, if you have a friend that lives in like a neighborhood far away from you, it's gonna be really difficult for you to see that friends because you have to go all the way to that other end of Shanghai. I think this can be especially annoying if you're coming to Shanghai with kids or with family and you want to live in a house. That means that you're probably not going to live in central Shanghai or any other neighborhoods that are kind of central-ish. I've never lived in central Shanghai but I've always lived like let's say 20 minute ride, metro ride from the center which is still considered very close in Shanghai. If it takes you like half an hour to get to downtown Shanghai you're basically like living really well. But for example in Copenhagen that would mean that you're like you live in the suburbs if it takes you half an hour to get to the center. In Shanghai that's not the case. If you live in the suburbs in Shanghai it can really take you a long time to get to the center and during rush hour it's basically like Mm, yeah, no, horrible, horrible. If you have kids, you definitely need to live relatively close to their school because, I mean, imagine just like driving your kids to the other end of Shanghai. I mean, you can't even imagine that because that's basically impossible. You just don't do that. Finding an apartment in Shanghai is relatively easy compared to cities in the West, like, I don't know, New York, Paris, London. I found my last apartment in Shanghai in four days, which, for example, in Copenhagen would be impossible. I have a video about that documenting the whole Whole process of finding my apartment I will link it here maybe it can be helpful for some of you the overall standard of apartments in Shanghai is not great I did find my apartment in four days but it was freaking horrible and we had so many issues with that apartment it caused us so much headache it can be very difficult to find what we would consider like modern good standard apartment apartments in Shanghai can be quite expensive for what you get and also communicating with Chinese landlords if you are a foreigner and your Chinese is not great can be an issue. That was basically what happened to me. We were four people and we found this apartment where we had mold in the bathroom or I don't know, we actually didn't notice that at first when we moved in. I know it's stupid of us, but we didn't. It wasn't that obvious. I Or maybe they like hit it, I don't know. 
we had a horrible kitchen we had bars in the freaking window and when we moved in there was a construction in the building but landlord our Chinese landlord promised us that the construction is just like a small thing and it will end soon and yes maybe we were stupid for trusting him but we're also on a budget we're students we're about to start the semester we just really needed an apartment and we wanted to stay together so we were just kind of desperate at this point so we ended up getting that apartment and as you might imagine the construction never stopped and they would you know start the construction at like crazy hours 6 a.m in the morning they would still do it on like saturday and sunday so if you're a foreigner coming to shanghai and you want to avoid all this what i could definitely recommend you is an app called wealthy it's basically like an international platform where everything is in english where you can find a room or a whole apartment without an agent and agents in shanghai take a fee often it's like 30 or 50 50% of your rent it can definitely save you a lot of headache like I had with my freaking landlord honestly it was it was just so not worth it Shanghai is a super exciting vibrant city where you never will be bored there's always something to do in Shanghai and that's like a good thing about the sites of the city that there are so many different neighborhoods there are so many new restaurants clubs bars art galleries, you know, festivals, exhibitions, like there's just always something happening in the city. Weather in Shanghai can be pretty extreme. Shanghai has horrible, 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 wet, hot, humid, Summer. Summers in Shanghai are pretty unbearable because not only of the heat but also the rain. It rains a lot and in general since Shanghai is close to the sea it's very very humid and it's not a good thing for your health. It's not a good thing for buildings. You shouldn't live on like ground floor. If you ever come to Shanghai don't ever live on the ground floor and if you have a house you really need to make sure that there's no mold in your building because that's very common in Shanghai because the humidity is so high as soon as you step outside during summer spring and early fall you're basically one big waterfall like nothing can save you then you might be thinking okay but at least winters are nice no winter in shanghai is horrible i freaking hate winter in shanghai to be honest i would even dare to say that i hate winter more than i hate summer buildings in shanghai don't have central heating and that is something really important to know if you want to move to Shanghai. The first time around when I went to Shanghai, I remember checking the temperatures and I saw that like, you know, average temperature during winter in Shanghai is so much higher than in Copenhagen. You know, it can easily be like around 10 degrees during winter, 10 Celsius degrees. So I was like, what is 10 Celsius degrees? That's basically summer in Denmark, you know, I can do that. No, I couldn't do that. And it was the coldest winter of my life. I'm not joking, I'm not exaggerating. The first time around I moved to Shanghai, the winter in Shanghai which was around like 10 5 Celsius degrees was the coldest winter of my life and that's because of buildings not having freaking heating I get like really passionate about this topic because well it's crazy it's crazy in Shanghai people use their AC to heat up buildings or they use electric heaters which can be very de dangerous because of like fire um, you know it can they can start fire so they're often illegal to use some people st still do it uh, but yeah if you use your AC to heat the room it's not great it does help a little it does heat the room but ac basically just blows hot air hot dry air it costs a lot like my bill my electricity bill during winter in shanghai would be so high so much higher than in like denmark poland france because the freaking ac would take so much electricity to heat up the room and it still wouldn't be really warm because as soon as you turn the AC off, it gets cold again. Shanghai is a very multicultural city. There are apparently around half a million foreigners living in Shanghai right now. Uh, but the thing about Shanghai is that there are a lot of people like coming in and out of the city constantly. So I, I can imagine it's difficult to count that number. But yeah, in Shanghai, you definitely meet people from all around the world. There are a lot of people from different Asian countries around, a lot of Australians, a lot of Americans, 
Europeans, tons of Europeans. I heard once that there are about 50,000 French people living in Shanghai alone and I totally trust that because wherever you go in Shanghai you meet tons of French people. So if you come to Shanghai and you're a foreigner, you want to meet other foreigners, definitely don't worry because there are plenty of foreigners in the city. However, maintaining Western or multicultural um, lifestyle in Shanghai can be quite expensive. Obviously eating at um, you know international foreign restaurants is going to be way 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 more expensive than eating at local Chinese restaurants. Going to a supermarket and getting basic products like cheese or bread and milk is going to be way more expensive than getting Chinese products. You will definitely spend more on groceries. If, let's say if you're a European, I mean I'm European so let's let's just say that you're probably gonna spend more on groceries than you did back in Europe even if you lived in an expensive European country like uh, I don't know Germany or Denmark you're probably still gonna spend more in China because you will probably want to you know get that milk or eat that good quality bread especially if you want to get good quality Western products there are like German bakeries in Shanghai where you can get amazing bread but it will cost you more. In general, people in Shanghai are very open-minded. And Shanghai is one of these great cities where you can really be whoever you want. You can wear whatever you want. You can dye your hair pink and nobody would probably care because people in Shanghai are too busy doing their own shit and they will probably not care about what you're wearing or your pink hair. And it can be a good thing, I think, personally. Uh, for example, whenever I would vlog in Shanghai and like walk around and talk to my camera, no one would give a shit. Like sometimes someone looks at you for a second and then they turn around and continue with their life. But for example, if I walk around and vlog in Copenhagen or Warsaw, people really stare. Sometimes they like stop on the street and turn around and stare at me with their mouth open. Shanghai can be pretty chaotic. It's a huge city and life in big cities can be rough. People are busy, people are always in hurry, everyone is just like running around, there is crazy traffic. Actually, that's something that I wanted to mention that can be dangerous in Shanghai and that is traffic and that's something to definitely consider if you have children or animals. Uh, if you have a dog, you should definitely not ever let the dog off the leash. Actually, that's one of the things that probably annoys me the most about Shanghai and that's something I never got used to. I saw so many dangerous situations on the road where cars, people driving really don't give a shit about pedestrians and I think it's horrible. Uh, it should change. I hope it will change, but yeah traffic can be really intense in Shanghai. The architecture in Shanghai is one of a kind or I should maybe say the mix of architecture in Shanghai. The way Shanghai looks, the visuals are very unique. When you're in old Shanghai you feel like you moved like 100 years back in time and then all of a sudden you see one of the world's highest skyscraper and you're like I'm in the future and in the past at the same time I don't know, that's just something I really appreciate about Shanghai. And then Nanjing Road with all the neon signs. I know it's like I'm probably the only person who lived in Shanghai who appreciates Nanjing Road because usually people who live in Shanghai freaking hate Nanjing Road because it's a very touristy place. And yes, don't ever come to Nanjing Road on Sunday or Friday or during public holiday. Oh my god, I did it once. I regretted it. It was horrible. But if you happen to come to Shanghai in the evening-ish hours where there is not that many people, not that many people in Shanghai on Nanjing Road means still like shit lots of people. I really appreciate the view, the neons, the you know, the lights, the colors, like this city is just beautiful. I think it, it's it's inspiring for someone who really appreciates art and likes to take pictures or videos, it's the perfect place to be. And then obviously pollution. You cannot not talk about pollution when you're talking about big Chinese city. Air pollution is definitely something that affects your life when you live in Shanghai. When you live in Shanghai, it's very normal to just wake up and check your air pollution app the same way you would check weather. Or actually, for example, like the iPhone weather app uh, shows you not only the weather, the temperatures, but it also shows the pollution level in Shanghai. It affects your life. There is no way around it. If you're someone who likes to go for walks or run outside there are definitely days in Shanghai where you just shouldn't go for a run or shouldn't 
walk especially if you're older if you're a child or if you're someone who has health issues that is something to consider definitely just keep in mind that pollution is not a stable thing meaning sometimes the pollution is very high sometimes the pollution is very low or non-existent it depends on the wind it depends on the weather when it gets cold pollution gets worse so during the winter pollution is in shanghai is much worse than during the summer if you want to hear more about my experience check out my book i lived in shanghai and i hope this video was helpful if you have any questions please let me know in the comments and i hopefully see you soon bye